Hey guys, welcome to the first installment of our Dashboard Sermon Series Community Group Conversation. Um, we are so glad, first of all, that you are in a community group. And if this is your first go-round, we are so excited that you've taken the time out and carved out space, been intentional to make this a priority for you. We are confident that God's going to do a work in your life uh, and will honor uh, the commitment that you've made. And so we're excited that you're here. Uh, tonight, we begin our conversation around um, the speedometer. Uh, we talked about on Sunday, uh, our whole series dashboard is just being attuned to and looking for those, uh, those gauges and warnings in our life, uh, particularly in our spiritual life, uh, that might cause for concern. And so how we can proceed with caution and uh, to live our lives in such a way that we stay far out of danger. And so uh, like on a dashboard in a car, you get certain readings to know uh, how things are going. And uh, hopefully this time together is going to help us to uh, look at one another and look at our own lives and uh, decide, you know, how, how things are really going with us and in our journey of discipleship with Jesus. And so the first one was on the speedometer. And uh, we talked on Sunday about the speed and the pace of life. I was thinking after, uh, after the sermon, um, I have uh, over the last, I don't know, year and a half, probably two years at least, um, have been trying to exercise uh, more than I once did in my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, mm -hmm. um, back around December, uh, I ran my first half marathon and I wanted to die and thought I really mm -hmm. was going to. But in preparation for that, uh, my good friend, Dale Wolf, who's leading a community group along with his wife, Tenen, hey Dale, hey Tenen, um, he and I would go run and we would, uh, in preparation, like we'd have to run a long way, like a really long way. So one time or a few times we would set out and go down highway 90 and we'd run the sidewalk by the beach and we would run all the way clean from like long beach to Gulfport. And it was amazing to me, a, that we didn't die. Um, but B, it was amazing to me, the things that you see along the beach, along the highway that at normal highway speeds, and I mean highway 90 speeds, which is like. 80 or 90, I think. Uh, I think people confuse Highway 90 with a speed limit sign, you know. Um, and so, like, you don't see things along the way when you're going at a car, you know, a rate, a rate of speed that's suitable for an automobile. But when you slow down and start running, and believe me, our running was very slowed down. It was not Dale's fault. It was mine. But you begin to see things. And I think the same is true in life. Like, when we change our pace of life, if we're going way too fast, we tend to miss a whole lot. But when we slow down, we see things and recognize things or made aware of things that we never would see otherwise. Yeah, I was going to say that reminds me, there was an essay I read once by an author, Wendell Berry, and he was talking about specifically hiking um, in the Red River Gorge. But he talked about how when you hike or when you walk slowly, part of your what you're doing is noticing where you're at. Sure. And he compared that to driving down an interstate where you're going, mm -hmm. um, where I would be going about 72, and you'd be 70, going closer to seven, 80. 77. Um, when you're going that fast, you could be on the interstate in Mississippi or Texas or Montana. It doesn't really matter to you where you are because your purpose is just to go as fast as possible. And so you don't notice or see any of the things around sure. you. But when you slow down, you're more present and you're more aware of where you are at and you're able to appreciate it in a better way. Sure. And I think, I think you know, taking that down to the, to the simplest level in our spiritual journey, um, when life is moving at such a rate of speed, um, if we do not slow down, and I think part of that is, you know, God's intention with Sabbath rest was to just take a break, slow down, look around and see what God's been doing, what's going on, and to celebrate what God has done. And so, uh, so if anything we can learn from, from this series, or particularly this sermon, is just to slow down, look around, don't miss uh, what's going on around you. The people, the relationships, the work that God is doing, and perhaps even the work that God wants to do. Yeah, and I think it's important to point out that this is countercultural. Absolutely. Like our, our society and our culture, especially here in the United States, is to do things as, as many things as fast as you can. And you can look at, um, you know, we love Chick-fil-A. Yeah. And all the time they're like, help us break the record for the drive through today. How many cars can we get through between 12 and 1? I do what you I know? can. And um, I love Chick-fil-A, and I've sat in that drive through But once you've been in the Chick-fil-A drive through <laughs> and gotten your food that fast, if you have to go sit in someone else's drive through It's different. You're, you're like, yeah, you, you want to get out and just say, you know what, I'm going back to Chick-fil-A because it's fast. But uh, what all I'm trying to say is our culture is 
to do as much as possible, as fast sure. as possible. And what we're suggesting, what we believe the Bible suggests and what God suggests is as much as possible, as fast as possible is not the goal yeah. at all. Sure. Yeah. One of the, uh, one of the lines, a quote I wanted to offer in my sermon, or I guess one liner that didn't make it in on Sunday. So you guys get uh, bonus special content. Yes, bonus content coming <laughs> at you is that, and, and particularly in light of the story of Mary and Martha, um, you know, that short snippet in the Bible tells us so much about uh, Mary's desire to be with Jesus and Martha's desire to make a great meal. And Jesus, you know, assured us that Mary had chosen the wisest uh, decision. Well, the one liner is this, that our position should always be no. Our posture should always be more important than our performance. That in, in, in God's eyes, um, where we position and posture our heart is far more important uh, than how much we are producing or how fast we are going. So performance always should surpass. Um, yeah, you said it backwards. I'm totally saying it backwards. Yeah. Posture. We're not even going to edit this, are we? We're just going to keep know. going. Depends so on how well we do posture, this posture over Perfor performance. Posture over performance. <laughs> you say it and I'll just nod. <laughs> posture over performance. There you go. No, they won't forget it. Well, awesome. you're getting mixed up with the prodigal son story. Sure. We have a line from that. Yes, we, we do. Love that says that God's more worried about your position than your performance. Yes. Like your, yes. where you're at in relationship to him. That's Correct. why you're And this is very up. similar. Uh, and, and I use posture instead of position. So, yeah. yes. It's better to sit at the feet of Jesus than to try to make him dinner. Sure. Yes. All right. At the end of the sermon on Sunday, Ben read a passage um, for us from Matthew, and it was Matthew chapter 11, verses uh, 28 to 30, and this is how it goes. It said, Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I'm humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. This passage from Matthew um, really would have spoken to Jesus' audience in a different way than it speaks to us. We live in a small town. We don't have a ton of farms around us. Um, the last time I drove anywhere, I didn't pass a field of oxen. So it's not something that we see a lot, but what Jesus was telling his people is like, when you pass a field and there are two oxen and they have that big wooden thing that connects them and then they're pulling a plow through the field and making rows, that yoke that keeps them together what Jesus is trying to tell him is he, like, hey, if you come and you walk alongside of me, if you want to work with me, like when I'll carry all the weight of that, like I'll carry you through whatever it is you're trying to do. Um, if you'll come and you'll put yourself next to me, if you'll walk through me and plow through a field with me. So that's kind of the image sure. that he's using um, that that's kind of lost a little bit on us just because we don't understand what that would be like to see two animals in a field working together that way. Um, I also want to read this, though, out of the message, um, paraphrase, because it's got a really awesome word picture in here that I love. But it, it's a little bit more modern day language in it. Uh, just listen and you'll, and you'll see. But in this one, it says, uh, Jesus says, are you tired? Are you worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Yeah. Those are, uh, that's an incredible way of saying that uh, beautiful picture. Um, the unforced rhythms of grace, uh, I think, gets me when I read that. Uh, and walking with Jesus is an unforced unforced rhythm of grace um, which is something that's so crazy because like you said earlier about this it's very countercultural um, you know grace itself is not something we celebrate uh, around us a lot or, or, or practice you know as a culture um, and so I think one of the some practical next steps from this and sort of how we respond uh, is to is to live into that grace and to allow Jesus to truly and honestly like bear our burdens for us. I think part of what drives us to do life so fast and so quickly or to be so concerned with our performance and what we're getting done and worrying about what everyone else is not doing is the fact that we somehow have convinced ourselves 
that we shoulder all the responsibility right. for everything. And, and we're reminded of that all throughout uh, culture that we're, you know, well, if you <laughs> don't get it right, or if you don't do it good enough, then shame on you. And, um, you know, we've said this long, you know, many times before is like, we were never meant to live life alone. And that goes for living in community, but it also goes with living under the direction and the guidance of God's Holy Spirit within us, uh, leaning on the actual work of Jesus, sal you know, the salvation he offers us right. through Christ on the cross. And so um, I think some practical next steps getting to that is just that um, this has to invade every level of our life, the way that we pray. When we, when we offer up our concerns to God, we've got to remind ourselves he really does care and he really does want to pick that burden up. And when we think, when we face a difficult decision or a difficult task, um, we have to remind ourselves we do not go this alone, but that God is with us. And, uh, and I think, um, you know, we, we have to, have to, and we didn't even get into this on Sunday, like we have to practice a Sabbath rest. We have to take time out of our schedule and say, okay, today, for this moment, we're doing nothing. And part of that is difficult because there's so much to do but there's a real act of faith in that, to trust that whatever I don't do today, that God's going to take care of making sure that gets done somehow, either later or in a different way. But also trusting that by laying that down, God's going to honor that time and that God's going to be honored by that time. And I think that's what we see, especially in Mary and Martha. Uh, she chose to stop yeah. and to sit at the feet of Jesus. And Jesus says she's chosen the wiser the wiser thing here and I think we have to remind ourselves of that when it comes time to take a break to take a rest to celebrate what God is doing has done and will continue to do in our lives yep we want to encourage you because um, I know if you're like me you feel guilty when you, when sure. you rest you think oh man all the things I ought to be doing and you know <clears throat> don't feel that way because we want to remind you that even if you're resting that God is not resting and yes. he's still working and he's still walking alongside you no matter what. And um, sometimes the best thing that you can do is to take a rest. So we want to encourage you guys um, as you go out this week to make, to slow down a little bit, to rest yes. a little bit, and to walk alongside Jesus. Um, he modeled that for us too. Yeah. The resting and the slowing down. Yeah. And just to kind of wrap us up here, and I don't want to sound too hokey about this, but I, I mentioned finances on, on Sunday. And I believe that when we honor God first with our finances, he somehow blesses and makes the most of what's left. Yeah. And I believe that if we will carve time out to rest and to sit at the feet of Jesus, God will bless and multiply that which is left over. And somehow it just seems to work out. So I would challenge you um, to really trust God with your time, with your attention, your energy, and see if God doesn't receive that, that, that offering of surrender and rest in him and make much out of the rest of your week. I believe he can do that, and I believe he will. I hope you'll have a great conversation as you finish out your community group uh, discussion. I, I pray that you will uh, be honest with one another, sure. be vulnerable, and uh, and that you will hold one another accountable. I, I hope for I'm praying that you make some big next steps and that uh, that God does a work, especially as you uh, look this week at taking a break, taking a rest, and trusting God and sitting at the feet of Jesus. We'll see y'all next week. Okay.